Well, why don't we, uh, I guess to get started, I, I uh, did something a little bit different this week. Um, I did everything like just, you know, uh, in, you know, this is a quarto file. So I think, you know, oh, yeah, cool. But, yeah. So this is like, I don't know if you guys have seen this or tried this. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I actually did on chapter five, I did a presentation in it. <laughs> sure. I, 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 yeah. Sorry. I didn't, maybe I didn't notice or, but yeah. So I like, I love yeah, going back to the visual uh, basic and then like, uh, this so anyway i'm just gonna uh, summarize some things um i'm not sure if this i i don't think they say this directly in the chapter but i i was like watching a youtube video or something else and like um somebody said this but like the main reason for doing mcmc is when you don't have this you don't have the normalizing constant is that what you guys are getting out of this absolutely yeah, yeah. The, pro the problem is always calculating that normalizing constant when you have a lot of parameters it's going to turn into a big giant multi-dimensional integral that's not possible to to or practical yeah. or tractable or whatever the right word is so you need some other approach yeah yeah but that was interesting because like actually i think we were talking about this ron the other a couple yeah. weeks ago where some of like the Python books will just be like MCMC, like we're just going to jump right into it, which I guess like makes sense for a lot more like realistic examples, but sometimes you just want something simple. It's just like, well, we can just specify the posterior, right? Just like very easily without having to resort to Monte Carlo or I guess Markov chain Monte Carlo. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. Anyway, this, um, coming along with this a little bit i think I, i'm understanding this. i like the, uh, the 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 tour manager problem although the analogy was a bit labored because uh, i don't necessarily see tour locations as distributions but whatever uh or points on a distribution but i guess we could think of it that way but um so it seems like the kind of the overarching thesis for this chapter is you know this two-step idea and you know the first step in any of the various procedures that we talked about uh, this week, or we read about this week, is you know picking a random location, and then I guess what is the differentiator, at least from what I my read was, what do we do in that in that second step, right? It's um, sometimes it's just go to that location, sometimes it's only go if you know something happens, you know probabilistically. Um, uh, so anyway, I thought that was sort of sort of interesting. Um, uh, and then yeah, I guess one of the other things that I I you know don't really under, so like they're calling the Monte Carlo algorithm just you know pick a random uh, location uh, from a posterior PDF um, and then go there right. So if you just apparently if you just randomly pick a place and go there. You're just doing Monte Carlo. Is that what everybody else sort of picked up on, or am I am I crazy? I don't know. But um, yeah, and then I actually just plugged in a bunch of the um, you know the, the code stuff uh, for um, for this. Uh, and, oh yeah, sorry. Probably would be good if I ordered my packages. Did everybody see this, by the way? Just making sure. Yes. Okay. It's all good. I probably should have asked that like five minutes ago, but there, here we are. Um, okay. So, right. So this was, um, you know, this was, uh, you know, kind of an example of like our tour problem, right? Like we have, you know, 5,000 random um, samples the fifth mean and the standard deviation and this is sort of what would happen right in our tour problem which is you know we're, we're we have our parameters we have you know something to uh the sample from and we, we take a bunch of you know tour stops as it were and this is what we're left with i guess but i thought this was like a really key kind of um point here right so after we go over this example but there's a list remember we only need mcmc to approximate a bayesian posterior when the posterior is too complicated to specify and if the posterior is too complicated to specify it's typically too, too complicated to be directly sample uh, uh to directly sample would draw them from um, as we did in our monte carlo tour which is what this is uh there's this, this is where uh, the more general and um MHMC MC algorithm comes in. Okay, so 
Um, I thought this was sort of helpful for me understanding like why we need, I'm still grasping with this, but I guess to me this was, was helpful. Um, I don't know about the rest of you all, but um, so our, our tour analogy isn't necessarily applicable or it's not enough in this regard because we need more to uh, kind of get someplace um, uh, with this uh, approximation of a Bayesian posterior. So uh, for the, the gist of the steps, the, you know, the step is the same as always. We could take some uh, location um, from our, our model and then uh, we either go to that place if the plausibility of the proof is greater than the current location. Um, they will definitely go. Otherwise, I like this is my favorite part. Maybe go there. I like that. That's like my favorite part is this maybe part that I think is what's novel. Is that fair to say? Would you all agree? Like there's this, you know, yes. I guess. Um, yeah. And so I guess that maybe part is, is, is the acceptance probability. Yes. Um, so uh, when the posterior plausibility of, of mu prime, which is our new location, is, is at least as great as our original location mu, alpha is equal to one, so thus we will definitely go there. When the posterior plausibility of mu prime is less than mu, um, alpha is um, less than one, thus we might go there. And um, this is just an example of, um, I, I'll, I'm not going to lie, like I actually had, to, I, I had forgotten what run if, uh, <laughs> or I guess it's R unif is the way it's pronounced, yes. Uh, That's funny you say because I always read that as run if. I'm like, run I if? Know, if, if what? <laughs> I know. It, kind of, it, yeah. looks like, it looks like an old basic, like an old yeah, basic. Yeah, exactly. Run if, what is yeah. this? Yeah. R unif, yeah. Uh, I do say run if too. So yeah, so this is where we are, um, and uh, we're just basically sampling um, one location between uh, what the current, you know, the current minus one plus one. So it's like, you know, we get some value, and then we can we can um, this is you know the, the 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 this is the proposed place. This is the current place, and this is our alpha, and so the next stop is, I mean, at least as I'm reading this, is we're not, we're not going anywhere. Is that fair to say? Would you? Is that what you read? And, and this is from the book, by the way. I'm, I'm just literally drawing this. Because um, we started at 2.93. And even though um, alpha is pretty high, it looks like we're not going there. Is that fair to say? Yep. I mean, it's just random, right? Based on the sample. Yeah. So, you, you know, yeah. That's what, so if, yeah. if, you do, if you change the seed, it would make you a different answer. Yeah, let's see. So this is, so this is lower than three. So probably the probability of going there from, from three isn't great. Just, you know, eyeballing it, right? Uh, so this is what's proposed. Um, so right off the bat, we don't feel great about this. Yes. Yeah? So probably, oh, actually, no, excuse me. In that last example, I was wrong. So our, our, our previous list was three. So 2.93. Yeah, we did move. Oh, you did move. Okay. Yeah, because you didn't yeah, go I'm, far. I'm sorry. I was like, for some reason, I had gotten into my head that 2.93 was where we currently were. So yeah, we're staying at three. Yes. Yeah, um, in that case. Yeah. Yeah. And so we can kind of, we could do this. I actually did this for a while. It was kind of fun. Uh, you know, just uh, trying a bunch of things. And so this probably, you know, well, I don't know. We, we might do better here. Um, it's not very plausible. <laughs> not very pl oh, well, oh, wait a minute, hold on. So, that was one, so it's going to definitely stick. Yeah, definitely stick. Yeah. Um, yep. So, anyway, these are all like sort of, um, you know, one run kind of things. Uh, they're or definitely move, I should say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, so, this is another thing. So, this is just basically like a fancier version. Of, of what I just did, so we just wrapped it in a function. So first we do our R unif to get uh, you know a single to propose the next chain location. We then you know use um, the density uh, normal distribution uh, function to uh, get that proposal and um, do some 
something to figure out what, what what's what's the next step, right? And so it, it, basically, this is all just what I just did, but wrapped into a single function, which is is, um, is pretty cool. Um, for some reason, oh yeah. So uh, this is you know, this is exactly what we just had, right? Uh, so I you know finished on thirteen. It's, yeah, we get all the same stuff in a in a in a data frame, which I think this is a great way. I, this is the way I try to work when I'm doing stuff like you know um, dynamically is like create data frames with all the information that you want in a single place. Hopefully, um, yeah. So. Um, Oh yeah, so this is one I tried to incorporate the. I know we get to the exercises at the end, and I was kind of like, well, maybe I could get a couple of these worked into like places, um, um, you know, as they occur. So this is exercise uh, seven point nine. So this is just one iteration with this uniform proposal model. So they ask us to set feed and run the comment uh, code below and comment on the return proposal alpha and the next. Uh, stop values. So, um, whereas we were doing a half life, or is that was it? What is it called? Sorry, this W. What, what was it? Uh, was it half length? Is that what they were referring? Yeah, to? half not, width. Half, half width. width. Sorry, half. Yeah. Like half length, half life. That's not right. That's radioactivity. <laughs> um, so we learned, you know, about the Goldilocks idea. So this is obviously a pretty narrow width, and then this, you know we're we're keeping the, the same current value so before i uh before i do anything what's your guys speculation about what will happen like what's what's the you know we 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 before we had a one and now we're taking you know one one hundredth of that width um what, what's what's going to happen to our i mean well i should say what's probabilistically going to happen with our our um Next location or next stop. Glad I asked this question. Clearly. Well, I suspect it's. Go ahead, Robert. Yeah, I mean, I was. I mean, they're both going to be pretty similar, I think, right? Like the proposal and, um, like the cur current, because you're not really moving a ton, right, within that that range. It's like pretty small, so like, it'll. I think it'll like it'll eventually creep up, but I mean it's going to do it really slowly. I guess the question is, will it move or not? And, and in that case, you know, because what you just said, because it's not going to go very far with such a small half width, that the ratio of the proposal plausibility and the current plausibility is going to be pretty close to one. So it's likely to accept and move, um, move that yeah. little tiny bit, right? Highly likely. Yeah. Let's see what let's see what it says. Uh, yep. Yeah, so we went from two uh, three to two point nine nine five three. Yeah, so um, obviously that gives us pretty nice alpha uh, for for accepting a, a move. Um, this is going to probably be less so, just I mean slightly less so because it's now half of what we found up above. Um, so we're not moving on this, which is you know not really that far. I mean, when you think about it, right? I mean, this is it's a pretty big drop off, um, and we've already seen this one, obviously. So, or actually, no, excuse me, we haven't because this is, I set a new seed, right? So, yeah. So this is interesting. Remember, like when I did this as an eight, um, we drew a very different number. So, um, yeah, these are all kind of just. Um, yeah. So yeah, this so this is the widest one that we um, we did in this particular run. So obviously we get a very very tiny alpha. Um, we could even do 300. Probably not a very good idea because well, um, <laughs> we're getting crazy now. We're getting you know in, you know I don't even know if this is actually plausible. Maybe I should just do 100. I know that we tried that. Um, well, still getting negative numbers. But anyway, the point is is um, yeah, that this this we we they talk about this Goldilocks idea, which I'll I'll get into later. So anyway, the point of what all the stuff I just did above is all just like a singular iteration, right? So to make this a proper MH algorithm, we need 
to be uh, running this iterative <coughs> and uh, you know get our trace plots and all the good stuff that we kind of introduced last week. So um, this is um, you know the um, kind of a similar to what I what I just did except now I don't know how familiar you guys are with loops, but loops are definitely a you know a common thing that is um, you know uh, well. Some people, you know, would rather not use them, but I still find myself using them and work just because it's hard to avoid them sometimes. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm like, I'm like that too. Pretty, you should yeah. avoid them because R is more efficient that way. But for me, I'm just so, I'm old. What can I tell you? <laughs> well, I, think, I think you can, there's some stuff you can do in like the per package to avoid yeah. them. Oh, that's true. But for some things, it's really hard. So anyway, we, we set a current value, we initialize the simulation, and then we go through um, for, uh you know however many uh iterations we um we went and by the way i don't know if this, you noticed this but so this is a function that i made or i should say the authors made up above and this is one of the things i love about r i mean i'm sure like a lot of other programming languages use this but i love putting one of you know a constructed function inside of another constructed function that's that's you know that's the way we should be doing this you shouldn't try to like write this all in this Single function because then it's a mess. You you know make sure this works and then you know flip it inside this other function to do that looping. Um, so yeah, so this is our, our way of doing this, and we're gonna do well, this is also from the book. Um, the um, we're gonna do five thousand iterations. We're gonna take that uh, width of of one half width, I should say, and um, yeah. Okay, so uh, this is my very first. I just I just made this this morning, so uh, yeah, this is my first trace plot. I don't know. I feel pretty good about it. What do y'all? I mean, this is fairly stationary. I mean, um, now of course um, have some kind of jumps up and down, um, and then also this is. You know what, what we get at the end of this after taking 5,000, you know, samples, we get a nice little, um, relatively normal looking distribution. Okay, so, um, they said this in the book. Did anyone else like was anyone else confused about why, um, we use a universe, uh, uniform distribution for this, um, this selection of, of you know, what you know, the width of, um, of the, the distribution? Well, the re only reason is because it's easy to generate uniform deviates, right? It doesn't actually matter. You could replace that with like a normal distribution. You can replace with any kind of like centered distribution you wanted uh, to do it. But it, the uniform is easy. I don't know if they actually use a uniform in the real implementation. Of course, they use Hamiltonian or Monte Carlo, so that's HMC, so that's different anyway. But um, yeah, I think it was just easy. You can use anything; it'll still work. That's what's cool about it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, not anything, but you could use like almost anything. There's yeah. a lot of arbitrariness in that. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty I robust. Think, let me put it that way to what you use. That's what I should say. I do remember that um, one reason, at least one of the important reasons I read about, was because it's symmetrical. So you know, whatever, not whatever width you half width you pick, you know, obviously, you know. You can even so. you can even use asymmetrical ones. You just have to make sure you use that Metropolis Hastings thing. We put that correction factor in, which they talk about later in this chapter. But yeah. Oh uh, yeah, I, I I don't even get into that, but that's that's a good point. Um, so anyway, this is we have we want to take only fifty samples, and we're taking a big ass you know half width, and it shows right. We get some um, some kind of craziness in our in our um, sorry. My, my screen is not going big enough. Um, so obviously, our you know, our this is not what we're looking for uh, from a trace perspective. And same thing here. This is not what we're looking for. So it's too few samples and too wide of a half width. And now we're taking the same 50 samples, but we're really focusing in on that. See what happens, right? Well, still not kind of what we want, and 
you can see here that we're sort of like a it's, it's sort of like a hill climbing kind of algorithm here like where you know the width is so small or narrow it's like we're kind of creeping up there but you know i'm not sure how big each of these is yeah, yeah i'm assuming like this is one this is two i don't know i don't mean, I, 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 be help if I had points, but it kind of things. But yeah, it doesn't look real good for us. Although, well, been getting a little bit better. Um, and then we have a thousand iterations with fifty. Oh, right. So the ask contrast the trace plots and what, explain why changing W has this effect. And I don't. I mean, I I think we already kind of know, right? I mean, I, I don't know if anyone has anything else to add. But you know, when we go to from fifty to point zero one, I mean, we're going from a really big width half width to pretty tiny half width and so um, you know we're it's the, the, the it's, it's sort of interesting to look at this right so we get this enormous jump because that's within the the the, the width of our half you know of our domain that we've you know uh, selected in the, the the w equals 50 up there so anything else you guys want to add about this I mean obviously I don't, I don't know to me this was like super helpful just to kind of like to try these um, and uh, yeah, and I, I, I agree. Yeah, I agree with you. I also spent a little bit of time playing with these um, in the exercises, playing with the different sizes of the step sizes um, for the Gaussian yeah. Monte Carlo. Anyway, the normal normal. I mean, and I found that yeah, it's pretty. You can really learn a lot by playing with that. You can learn kind of what to look for in the traces. Like if you have a very small step size. Then you'll always almost always accept, and you're you're you kind of just do this random walk around. The correlation length is going to uh, the yeah the correlation length is always going to be very very long, right? You don't get a very good result. Or if you have a very large jump, you see it, you know, getting stuck, you know, jumping and then getting stuck and then jumping and then getting stuck. So it's kind of yeah. it's very interesting. Yeah, yeah, and then um, yeah, I agree. I mean, obviously, we're getting better from a distribution. Well, I mean, somewhat better from a distribution standpoint, but yeah. And then lastly. Um, I mean, so this would be like, I guess this would be, well, if we only have uh, a thousand, so I, I don't know, how would you even deal with like a burn-in? Would it be like, so isn't like the first quarter is the burn-in period? So uh, isn't that what we said last week? I forget. I don't even remember first, what we First half? Yeah, they were using the first half. Yeah. Uh, by default, Stan could, uses yeah. the first half. Yeah. I mean, that, that kind of makes sense. I mean, you can see it's, it's still kind of moving up and then it's like around like 500. It, it seems to get, well, I mean, obviously it, it keeps messing around but what was your step size for this one uh it's uh point oh one. Yeah. yeah see i mean you can tell by looking at this it, really wandering i don't think it's really ever getting getting very good well that's gonna be take a while i don't think it's ever gonna it's always gonna have a really long it's always gonna wander around because that very small step size yeah Maybe this i mean you can still thing. use it you just have to like throw away a lot of samples your effective sample size effective sample number is gonna be much less than the million or whatever you just put in there <laughs> why is <laughs> that what would you say? Why is that? Oh, sorry, what were you saying? I can. Why would it be less? Well, if you right. remember last time, they you know they do this thing where you can in our stand can, in stand where you can compute something they call the effective number of samples, right? Because you've got uh, a very small half width for jumping, the effective sample size here is going to be really really small because it's mostly sampling the same points over and over and over again and just moving slowly uh, away from them. Yeah, this is, yeah, I should probably not do this. <laughs> oh, wait a minute, it did, it did most of it, right? I guess, well, I don't know, maybe it got hey, through. That's 10,000 right there. That's 100,000, yeah. no, it did. It did so now it's like it's going up to like five. But see how it still um, never settles down because, but you can still use this. You'd have to just throw, you'd have to take, you'd have to thin it out a lot. <laughs> yeah. I like how, like, I like how, like, uh, you can see how, like, thick these lines are. So that just means that, like, there's, like, a bunch of little jumps up and down. Like, yeah. it's almost like, you know, you know what this looks like? It almost looks like a stock. Um, and the you know, reason like, for that is yeah, it looks like like basically it is, walk. it is a yeah. random walk for the most part, because yeah. your step size is so small, the, uh, mm -hmm. the, the effect of the, the effect of the underlying plausibilities aren't, isn't doing much, right? The, yeah. So it's like right. a random walk in a very light force field. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like there's actually, it's not completely random, but yeah. Oh, there we go. That's better. Now, now, better. Now, now better. Yeah. Now yeah. we're talking. Yeah, so I did, like you could like thin it out or maybe even like run it for longer, it's, like thin it out. Fairly stationary ish, yeah. you know. And, um, yeah, but we wouldn't. But according to the rules, though, we wouldn't even. Although it's kind of actually think about this: if the burning period starts stops here, 
this is still moving up. I mean, this probably, if I was looking at this, I would be like, oh, uh, we, we probably need to go back to the drawing board. That's try right. another, That's a, yeah. Try a so bigger one. Try a bigger W because it still looks like a, there's a pretty long correlation length there. Yeah. Yeah. You want it to be more fuzzy. Yeah, no, I like the fuzzy. Oh, no, yeah. Now yeah we're that's talking. a lot better. That's a lot better. That's, that's a lot I feel better. like this would be like a really great t-shirt design. Like, why hasn't somebody done this yet? You know what I mean? Like, this would be like, you know, the ultimate nerd. Like, you know. <laughs> uh, it might have. <laughs> yeah. Um, and now we go. There we go. So now it's like we got something here. Um, yeah, okay. Um, so anyway. So, yeah, so consider the results. Is the um, is the W value as important as the number of iterations is um, when uh, is, is sorry is the W value as important when the number of iterations is much larger? I think I think Ron, you explain just explained that right. Um, it's, yeah, you know, it definitely I, is important because you're just throwing away, you're just lowering your effectors. You want to get the the most effective samples you can out of it, right? Yeah. So I guess like, you know, if you, it, well, I don't even know. I mean, I guess, I don't know. I don't know if this would be something we're going to be doing in future chapters, but like, so in the case of the point zero one, I mean, like, what do you, I mean, I mean, what could you even do to like make that effective? You just like run a million or like more. I mean, would that help? I mean, I don't even know how you would. Um, don't. Yeah. I mean, the thing yeah. is don't use W don't use that W use a better. Yeah. W. <laughs> yeah. Guess, or like, yeah. or like you run it for longer or maybe you, yeah, you could I, mean, get thin, I, I, I guess like add some thinning right to yeah. like make it the right the values like a little less auto correlated um maybe yeah factor but yeah, yeah i mean i think it's like what rod said just like pick the better w and I, yeah. you know, the question's like weird because it's like i feel like the easier fix is never like oh let me just run this for longer it's like i'll just That's use my brain yeah, yeah no but i feel like i'll just use my brain and pick a better w if like yeah. my trace plot looks wonky the good yeah. news is the good news is that stan with this no u-turn sampler thing will take care of all this for you and it'll pick the right w for you wow. so um, oh wow so, you yeah, don't have to this is only oh, for wow. yeah like intuition yeah. so yeah. you won't have to yeah you won't have to worry about this ah. in, the, in the sequel well, as they say that's 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 helpful because I, yeah i was like i don't understand like what exactly i'm picking here i mean i get the oh, fact yeah. that, i get the fact that like you know a bigger number means the wider array of possible you know responses to, to potentially go to but i'm also a little bit like um so what <laughs> yeah i mean i guess like i guess i do get it but yeah it is it, it, it's uh, i'm still yeah like everybody in probably okay yeah so um they did talk about this idea of you know the Goldilocks idea of you know um, we need to tune by picking you know the right. So this to, to to Ron and what you guys just said like what his point is was like pick a better half life. Uh, they called it a half life. I, I think I wait a minute. Maybe I maybe I wrote this. <laughs> Should be a half length. I guess. Sorry. Whatever. Um. So yeah. So this is. I don't know why I I, I put this here. Um. Uh, maybe just to show like he's sorry uh oh uh, i guess maybe right because like that one's obviously like so big so like it you know it like jumps i mean i think yeah. it's what's between like three and six but like there's some iterations right where it just like it's it gets stuck and then it like spikes up and it gets stuck and then it keeps like doing that so you have these like weird like yeah like stare looking yeah uh, plot right so the tuning is, I guess, is, I'm assuming is just with the W. I mean, I'm assuming like that's what yeah. I kind of yeah, there's not, not a, but we, I mean, we, we pick some number of, of iterations, but we don't, um, we don't tune that per se. Okay, so this was um, a couple more here. Um, so this is 712. Um, oh, actually, okay, I, I know why I picked this. I did not do this. Right, so we have this MH tour. So I was thinking, I don't know if you guys even want to try this. We don't have to. Right? I just so this is the the MH tour, which in, it also involves um, so yeah MH um, uh, iteration. So, so, so I guess I don't I don't really know how. Okay, so we have to take those two functions and create a function which constructs a chain of new values using um, a normal proposal model with a standard deviation. So, I mean, I guess what I don't get is, so they're talking about, 
instead of using a uniform distribution, we're using a normal distribution or what, how did you guys read this? Cause I don't know, know that I'm That's right. exactly right. Yeah. They're just showing you that you, that's what we were just talking about before. You don't have to use a uniform. You could use a normal distribution for your proposal. Um, it shouldn't have any real effect. <laughs> okay. Well, it's, um, I mean, it'll have some effect. We won't have any, you still get the same right answers at the end if you tune it right. Right. Okay. Well, let's do this. I'm, I'm just as a way to kind of like make. How did I miss that? Up? I don't. I didn't do that exercise. I don't know why. I, mean. I only did a few of them. I did like a few of the exercises. Yeah. I didn't do that one. Yeah. Well, I I, I only got into it because I was like, you know, I was going to try to make a point of, you know, doing stuff in code. Okay. Yeah. Oh, wait a minute. Hold on. I do not want to do that. Um. Okay. So. Um. Do we need to change anything in this? Yeah, the run if the propose. Yeah, so it needs to be uh, our norm. norm. Yeah, our norm. And then um, hold on, let me make sure I get the um, standard deviation was S. S, and then it's an unknown. I guess what would the did it say the mean? No, well, the mean would be the mean would be oh, yes. your oh, yeah. current. Yeah. Oh yeah, your prior. Um, yeah, actually, hold on. So I, I copied and pasted this. I don't know why it's duplicated. So there is, so it's just all we have is 20 iterations and a standard deviation of zero one. Is that right? Yeah. yeah. It'll change. So you probably want to make that a parameter, but. Okay. So sorry. So, so W, what? your W parameter should become like the S parameter now, right? Okay. okay. And okay. then it should be mean current. Would be yeah. Um, current. Yeah. Okay. Oh no, you can leave that as current. I'm oh no, so like it's um, it would be mean is equal to current. So mean. Oh, the distribute in the in the R norm. Yeah. Oh oh oh, sorry sorry sorry. Yes, I got you right. Oh, yeah, I was okay. not I was not clear. <laughs> All right. Um, so mean equals current, and then S for uh, is it just, is it standard is it, is it SD for standard deviation is the argument? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That becomes S, right? um that looks right yeah that right and then everything else should be the same i think yeah because yeah. i because right, i think what right all we're changing is just the proposal so instead of like yeah a uniform distribution to normal and then that'll obviously just be yep i mean that'll be the same well you yeah change the oh yeah the S, arguments S. um so the current. but i think that's um I mean, that's uh, and then that equals that right yeah yeah okay and then oh sorry i don't want to say this you gotta um, change the function arguments there from n w to n s that's a minor change but where is that sorry mh tour function n comma w it should be uh, w doesn't mean anything anymore so no right. no just change that w to an s yeah yeah there you go. Oh, i see you rename here excellent yeah okay so current and then we, yeah, it's just basically all the same because we're just running the same. I mean, so basically, when you think about it, the only thing that this function is doing is just is iterating. It's yeah, it's yeah. It up. It's actually all of the heavy lifting really is is being done here. Yeah. Right, and the yeah. the big part is that current plausibility thing where it calculates the prior times the uh, likelihood, right? In the right. In the, so that's where the real model is. Yeah. Okay, hold on. I'm trying to save this thing. Okay, so let's. Uh... Oh, actually, hold on a second. Did I screw something up here? Because wait a minute. So no. wait a minute. How do I? Where do I? Where? Where am I putting in? Oh, this is in the end. Sorry. Sorry. Yes. Um. So n equals twenty, and then uh, s equals point zero one. Okay, hopefully. Uh, oh, actually, you know what? What am I doing? Needs, yeah, I guess it's not gonna work. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I don't know. I'm so I, I uh, yeah, my bad. I was um, actually, you know, one of the other things that's hard for me is I'm not used to. Um, I yeah, I do not like the I, visual. I've like tried it. Wait, how did you? I'm a fan. You can just pick source versus. Like, yeah. How did visual you? Sorry, like, this is a really basic question. How did you get that? Oh, you just defined those in the workspace, so now they work. Okay. I got yeah. You. I never, I never do that. That's smart. Yeah. So, okay. So now, um, I guess we have to plot these things to make more sense of them. But. 
Oh, right, right, right. Yeah. So actually, hold on. So then the plot. Oh, actually, yeah. Sorry. Good, yeah. Good, good catch. So you can also yeah. just like pipe it too. Um, yeah. Except, um, well, actually, hold on. So because that, that's a tibble, so you can always just like pipe it. But I mean, that also works too. Yeah, you're probably right. I, I've had bad experiences with piping things. Oh, really? Uh, <laughs> well, sometimes, like things that I think that should be pipeable aren't. So. I, I, uh, I tend to be a little bit uh, skeptical sometimes, uh, but that's that's me. Um, okay, so this should work. Now all of a sudden it won't run. Uh, I mean, yeah. Yeah, no, I'm actually literally like, I don't know if you guys ever deal with this. Um, Yeah, I've been having this a lot recently. Um, yeah, it just won't I, run. Yeah, hold on. Is it because it's, because it's in, a, in the visual? Yeah. It's better in the, in the source part? No, no. You just, what if you just threw it in the console? Yeah, hold on. Let me, let me just reboot here real quick. Yeah. Like, um, For sure. <clears throat> um, and, and, Got plenty of time. Uh, um, so, Robert, you've got next week, right? Yep, next week. Austerian oh. Prince. I have not even read that chapter yet, so let me see what it's about. Yeah, it's about. I'm looking at it now. Posterior inference and prediction should be should be fun. Oh, yeah, I see. Cool. This is a, this is starting to get really into the meat of the stuff now. Yeah. Then regression. Cool. I think that'll be interesting. Yeah. Um, yeah, I haven't done a lot with Porto, but I, um, Tom Mock, I don't know if you know that, I, I think he's like an art studio guy or something, but yeah, yeah. He, gave, he gave a long, um, I have it, I have it on my queue to watch. Um, but yeah, no, I, uh, people think really like My queue to watch too, I haven't done yet. But <laughs> there's, so many, there's so many things in my queue, like I'm sure everybody else is, but yeah. Um, yeah, no, I don't, I don't know. Like I, I know a lot of people that do a lot of presentations in R, and like they, you know, some people, you know, obviously are very like wedded to, um, you know, the way that they did it before. Okay. Um, all right. Why is okay? Did I not like? Apparently, like yeah, all the other stuff that I just did didn't like make it open save uh, something yeah i did oh yeah it's still in the is it still in the source side no because i rebooted but um uh i guess yeah it's actually the um, um all right let me do this let me just real quick i don't know this would be it for me but um um one thing I need to do is just change this out. Yeah. All right, now it's a... around this time. Okay. Hey, oh. what happened here? Oh. Well, let me do this. Let me get rid of these limits. That might help us a little bit. Yeah. Okay. Right. okay. Oh, that's probably what you expect. Yeah. He claims. <laughs> yeah, he claims. <laughs> Not quite sure. Like what? Yeah, I know that feeling. Been, yeah. Okay, so that was so it, yeah. that was oh that was the first one. So the second one is let's do that. is uh so it's now just a thousand iterations. Uh, the same with this point oh one. Oh, so it's yeah, you're just boosting. Yeah, you're just boosting in. Yeah, and then that's the yeah. No, yeah, I think it was still 0.01, right? Or am I totally wrong? It? Or did I? I could. Oh no, I read it wrong. Nope, that, you're right. <laughs> yeah, it's just. Ooh. It's a... so then S is too big. Yeah. Is it? I don't know. It's probably not too big. You still have well, I mean, iterations. Well, I'm saying. Oh yeah, I mean. Hmm. I mean, I guess I was thinking that it was big in the sense that like. 
because you're getting that weird looking plot right and then this that's too small right because yeah. it's just like yeah. and wandering around Ran yeah. so random walk means too small <laughs> yeah like, kind of rule of thumb yeah. i just invented i just invented just now. Yeah, i like that <laughs> it looks yeah. like a random walk it's not it's not good enough um yeah and then for some reason i think I, this is uh yes yeah okay. well anyway so that that's all i got i mean i i thought it was interesting i i didn't really want to get into like all the other i mean i felt like the main gist of this was trying to figure out like this you know these tuning things and like what you're making different choices are and whatnot but um no that's yeah. good i the only thing i would add is to comment on the why it works part did yeah. everybody understand that part i'm getting yeah. there yeah I'm, i need to reread it a few more times <laughs> well yeah i mean i guess um because uh well i mean we know stuff about likelihood and we know you know we know we don't know all the stuff that we need to about the, the posterior uh, model, but we know some stuff. And the some stuff that we do know is helping us approximate that distribution. Is that right? Mm -hmm. I feel like what I said has some meaning, but I'm, I'm still getting I'm still grasping. But uh, yeah, that would be what I thought would say. Yeah. What do you all well, I, mean, I think that 7.6 does a pretty good job of explaining it um, and it's worth reading through and, and working through what they do there just to understand like what's happening so it's not magical. <laughs> um, right. the, key, the key thing is this, prince, this thing they call the principle, of de they don't actually say this in the book, but there's something called the principle of detailed balance, which basically says that when you have, it's, it's well known in physics, it's right when you have a, the probability of transitioning from a state to another state times the probability that you're in that state is equal to the probability of transition from the other state back to where you were, times the probability of being in the other state. If those things are equal, it's, it's called detailed balance because you're basically flowing back and forth at the same rate. And yeah. there, therefore you're in equilibrium at that point. So it's a, it's a sufficient but not necessary condition to be in equilibrium when you have this detailed balance going on in your Markov chain or yeah. any random or any random process. So if I'm, as an, a simple example, I guess, if I, I mean, there's only two states, A and B, right? If the, in the current distribution, the probability of me, me being an A times the probability of me transitioning from A to B is the same as if I'm, the probability of me being in B as a transitioning probability from B to A, right? Then the, the probability of A and B won't change. The amount of, that's really kind of weird way to say it. Um, maybe well, actually, you see, actually, the last yeah. sentence of 176 says this, but no matter the scenario, the, the MH uh, algorithm preserves. Yeah, the relative, relative likelihood, yeah. Likelihood. So it's right. basically what you just said, right? So it's like where yeah. we are, where we might go. Um, I, I did a terrible job explaining that, but if you're in, you could Google oh. uh, detailed balance, and I think there's like a good Wikipedia page on it, and uh, the detailed balance will tell you, uh, uh, will give you some insight into it. What struck me as weird is the way they wrote it, the ratio of the posterior probabilities to the ratio of the plausibilities, or no, sorry, the ratio of the transition probably to the ratio of the uh, posteriors, but I always would, I, would, I wouldn't write it in that way. I'd write it instead as a product. So that it's, you know, yeah. that's the detail about Anyway, I don't know. It's one of those things again, where I start talking and I realize that I don't have a really <laughs> good way I to say that, it. <laughs> that's, probably been the, that's probably been the biggest learning curve in this whole book club for me is, yeah, a lot of times you start talking and you're like, I really don't understand this as well. But yeah, no, I, I mean, I, 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 I did read this why the algorithm works section, but yeah, it's um, yeah. I mean, the, the, yeah, I, I do remember reading this like you must preserve the relative posterior plausibility of any mu prime and mu pair. Um, so yeah, that's 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 the key issue. That's a good point to uh, to mention that like it's that ability that makes this all possible, right? If we, if we couldn't hold those relative plausibilities, we'd be in trouble. So. Anyway, uh, I got to jump off here in a minute. But, yeah, uh, thanks. I appreciate it and uh, yeah. look forward to next time. And just a parting word, I would just say that the um, uh, this chapter opens up with a statement that you don't really need to necessarily understand everything in this chapter. It's kind of like a, hey, how's you know, let's look under the hood, peek under the hood. But the rest of the book, they are going to use tools uh, that will do this stuff for you, so to speak. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's a good point. Yeah, like the, uh, the your point about like the uh, half link and all that stuff, not having to worry about that. That's, that's pretty key. So. Anyway, yeah. uh, good good talk, guys, and I will yeah. uh, I will see y'all uh, next week.
All right, great. See you next week. Bye. Bye.